Hello and welcome back! In the last video, I showed you how to place objects in a grid using a 2D array and then take the stored value of the grid position and change the color of a sprite with that value. In this video, I will be using a sprite sheet from Kenny's Assets to spawn in the tile with the correct tile edge into the scene. Now. I've gone ahead and trimmed Kenny's asset down to the tiles that I need, which will just be water, desert, and grass tiles. As you can see here, we also have a few trees, a dead tree, some flowers, and some rocks. But to get these assets, you will need to go to this website and download the asset. You can then trim the asset yourself or use the link in the description below. So, to get started, we will first need to split this into multiple sprites. Going to multiple, we can turn this off. We'll also go ahead and change this to point no filter and no compression so that our sprites will have their full detail. Now going into the sprite editor, we can go to slice by cell size, the cells are 16 by 16 with a 1 pixel padding. Slice your tiles. Make sure that the tiles sliced correctly. Just select random ones around. Then click apply. Now we have our tiles. Let's go ahead and start modifying our script. Going back into our project, we can get rid of or we'll turn this into an array, put an S on it, take this out, we'll actually just redo all of that code. Now to get started, we are first going to add in the tile prefab that we will use to start this off with. Now in spawn tile, we will say sprite renderer sr equals instantiate our tile prefab. And then instead of what we were using before, which was this, we will be putting it in a function to make it easier to use. The function will be called get or it'll be called grid to world position. Grid to world position. Then we will put in the values that we'll need from the grid, which is the int x and int y. It will return a vector 3, which will be the transform position of the tile's actual object. And in here, we'll say return using what I copied a minute ago, new vector 3, what we had before. Now we can simply say get grid grid to world position, put in our values, which is the x and the y. We want a zero rotation. You do that by saying quaternion.identity. Now we want to access the sprite renderer on this object. Now using the stored sr of the sprite renderer, we will set the name and the sprite of the object. So sr.name equals There we go. Now we need to set the sprite of the sprite renderer, which will be the a certain sprite from the sprites array that we set up. Now, we will create a function called isEdge to tell 
if it is an edge object, and if it is, which edge is it? And then we will return that value to get a sprite from our sprite array. We could probably name it better, but we'll just use is edge for now. Let's create this function. Now in this function, we'll just have a bunch of ifs and else ifs, checking whether or not it is a edge or not. So if y is equal equal to our rows minus one and x is equal equal to zero, we'll return zero else if y is equal equal to rows minus one and x is not equal to zero and x is not equal to columns minus one. If that's true, we'll return one. Now else if y is equal equal to rows minus one and x is equal equal to columns minus one, we will return two. Now, else if x is equal equal to zero and y is not equal to zero and y is not equal to rows minus one, we will return three. Now we will skip four because four is actually going to be our non-edge tile. So this one will return five. I'll show you the reasoning for this when we look back at our sprite sheet in a minute. So else if x is equally equal to columns minus one and y is not equal to zero and y is not equal to rows minus one, return five. Else if, we're almost done, don't worry, stick with me x is equal equal to zero, zero, and y is equal to zero, return six, two more, three more, else if x is not equal to zero, and x is not equal to columns minus one and y is equal equal to zero return seven else if x is equal equal to columns minus one and y is equal equal to zero, we will return eight. And now for the middle tire tile, if none of those are true, we'll return four. Return four. All right, that was a lot of typing, but it's simply giving us a value depending on which edge it is. And then the arrangement that we set up in our array of sprites will be the same as the returned value. So let's see what I mean by that. Going into our grid manager, opening up, opening up the sprites, and opening up the tile sheet, we'll use the dirt tiles. See, this is the top 
left corner, this is the top corner, this is the top right, which is the same order we will be placing it here. So the top left, the middle top, the top right, if we widen these up, we can see this is the next ones down. And then the one that is return four, element four, is our middle sprite, the next tile, then our last row of tiles, Now that we have our tiles set up, our spawn tile is set up with the is edge and the new grid to world position, we can set up the tile prefab that we'll start with, which will be simply a game object with a sprite renderer on it. So we'll say create 2D sprite. We'll call this tile. Drag this into your project to create a prefab. Delete it from your scene drag it to the grid manager, and that should be all we need to do. Ah, we forgot one important step. Going to our tile sheet, our tiles are 16 by 16, but our pixels per unit is 100. Changing this to 16 will make a 16 by 16 tile, one unit by one unit within Unity. Clicking play again, you'll see that it works. Excellent. That's it for this video. Join me next time to find out how to update the tiles that we have currently selected to use the water or the desert theme without having to go to our grid manager and manually switching out the tiles by hand. Have a wonderful day. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video.